coming to you with another video. Um, in case you're new here, my name is Wendy, and I am going to show you um, cross stitch things as well as other things I've been doing in my life, whether that's inside, outside, craft related, non craft related. You know, kind of, it's kind of a mix of things. Um, so yeah, let's get right to it, and we'll find out what's what's going on today. Um, let's start out with some acquisitions that I got. <laughs> There's one in particular I'm very excited about, and you will see see my my happy dance um, as I show you. Uh, I got something that in the last video I showed you. I had um, oh that little cabinet on wheels that had the leaves that would fold up to uh, make a little bigger, flatter surface to work on. I had forgotten to show you something else I'd gotten during that visit when I went um, to this little thrift store in the town next to us. And that was this. It's kind of hard to see exactly what it is, but it's got a level here. So bars up here and a level here. And there's a level down here as well. And originally what came in it were these little let me stick one up here as you can see. These things, these funky things. And there was eight of them. So they're, it's like spices. This is oregano. So it had a whole bunch of different spice jars in it. I don't want the spice jars. I wanted this. Because what I was thinking of doing, because it's just, it's not very deep or wide or however you want to call that. Um, and it's only this high. It, this would be perfect, and because it's got two levels, for smalls, a bunch of smalls. Very easy to, to display because this is going to hold them up. You know, it's going to have support to lean against. You've got two levels, so you can see a whole bunch of them. They're not just all smushed down into a uh, bowl or something, which I love the bowl look as well, but I really think this is going to be awesome. The, the scroll work at the front here is pretty cool, too. So I'm very happy about this. Now I've got to fill her up with some smalls. Uh, the next thing, well, I'm going to put in a video real quick here of the other acquisition I got because it's too big and it has to be in the house. So I will uh, insert that here. I am doing my happy dance. Yes, this lovely beast behind me, I recently acquired. It is going to be the closet, closet, for this room. Okay, so, as I mentioned, this lovely beast. It's pretty deep. I think it measured um, like 21 inches or something. It's um, deeper than a hanger would fit, so that's why it's going to be a closet. Plus, wait till you see the inside. So awesome. Sorry for the glare from my window. There we go. It is freaking awesome, people. So down at the bottom, if we wanted to use it for that, is for shoes. So your heel would sit on the top of that little bar. Got a shelf up there. Got a few shelves down here. You've got, this is really old. I'm guessing these are studs for like um, sleeves, cuffs, cufflinks. Maybe a place for ties if that's what you wanted to use that for. A lovely mirror. Hello. That opens up. Another shelf here. And then these drawers, drawers all still have their original tags on them. And they slide out. If you're not careful, they'll completely come out. So, happy dance indeed. Now, the only thing I'm going to, I'm going to have to do a couple of things to kind of make this work a little better is the door latch, you know, to keep it shut doesn't really 
work. I mean, you probably could do something like this up here for that part right there. But then they, this doesn't really, this does this door doesn't really meet as well as it probably used to. So there's a gap, so it will not latch it to stay shut as well. So I'm probably going to get some kind of um, like magnetic thing that I can put up here and then attach it to the top of this as well. And the other thing, I'm not sure what they were thinking. I don't know how this was made, but here's the rod for the hangers. Um, there's like <laughs> way up a hanger in here. So I'm going to have to um, put some kind of rod in there that's lower. If that one will come out, I'll take it out, possibly use that one, and then just drop it down so that you can actually hang some clothes on it. But other than that, I mean, it is awesome. Very awesome. And as you can see, I am thrilled to death with that thing. Um, it's a wardrobe. Um, I'm using it as a closet, pretty much what it was intended for. Uh, it's in my son's room right now. And the reason that we're going to use that is because um, this is a very old house. It was built in 1859. And... The original house just had two bedrooms upstairs. Um, my mother extended the upstairs so that now there's a third bedroom now, but um, the room he's using is one of the original rooms. They didn't have closets. They didn't build closets in there. So that room does not technically have a closet. Now she, I think it was her, had put in um, like those metal shelving that you could kind of hang clothes from. This one did not have the, I'm not sure what they call it, the smooth glide so that the hanger could just glide back and forth on it. It actually had to put it in between all the little slots, which is a pain. I hate those metal shelving. If you have them, I know they work great, but I hate them. I hate installing them as well as they're just not attractive. So that was against one wall and it wasn't enclosed or anything, so it wasn't that attractive. So I, since we're redoing his room, and if you go back and look at some previous videos, I have, I'm repainting the room. Plus there's this kind of wallpaper technique that was put on the walls, and we're having to take that off, and it's a very slow process. And I'm redoing some of the, um, like, attic crawl space doors. There's two of them in his room, and I've done one, and I have just now reached the other one. Um, so I'm going to be able to make that door and attach it soon. So because I'm redoing his room, I took that shelving down and I needed to replace it in some fashion. Didn't really want to put shelving back up of some other kind. Um, didn't really want to build an enclosed shelving or closet type space. So I came up with this idea. <laughs> And I'm very happy with it, um, <clears throat> just because, partially, because I found the perfect one. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, yeah, I am. I'm very happy with it. It's it's wonderful. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say about it. We're done. Okay, let's move on to some stitching related things. At the beginning of the year, I believe or maybe at the very end of last year, I had showed you a um, journal I was going to start using to keep track of what I've been stitching. Um, before, I just had um, a notebook, a plain old notebook, um, a spiral bound one, and I had gridded it, so I turned it on its side, so it was landscape size, and I had just drawn lines and made a grid kind of out of it and I would just mark um, you know write down the name of the project I was working on and mark what day it was for that month so each page was a month and I had seen a video of someone who had used this system and I thought I really like it so I'm going to do it so it's in um, like the the happy planner type of system 
Um, it's not cooperating very well here. So this is the one I have. It's really thick because I'm using it. Um, I've got a calendar part in it as well as some stitching pages that I use. So here's one of the pages. So writing down which project it is and then filling in. And I use little tiny stickers just to, you know, make it look a little bit more interesting instead of just Xing it or checking it off. So I am using this system to keep track of what I stitch. I had also watched, she wasn't, a, she wasn't stitching related, but I watched a video of someone who had started doing, and it's not anything new, but for some reason it just triggered something and I thought, I want to start doing that, is um, more of a habit tracker kind of thing. So I know that you've probably seen there's like little stickers and there's seven little dots and you can write in what it is for that particular thing and you might want to put it in a planner or something. But I wanted to make it a little bit more creative than that. <laughs> so I kind of, I made my own. I've got, it's a habit planner thing. I've got these discs and these were the original discs that came on my planner that I'm using for my stitching and calendar stuff. So I just repurposed these. I made front covers and back cover. It's just a piece of cardboard with some paper and I put some fun, funky paper on the inside. And instead of just having a box to check off things, um, I made pictures kind of, kind of. Um, and I made each area, it, the, this is for one month. So this will be for the month of June. So things like this. So I got a mandala type thing, I've got jars, I've got butterflies, and each picture is for something else. Um, got a few things here, and yes, I just drew, drew these. They weren't perfect, they weren't, they're just kind of fun. Um, here's another thing. This is a little bit more in depth, so yes, I'm coloring it in, but I'm also writing down what I do, so this is like an extra extra chore besides the normal stuff I want to do each day. Here's another one. Um, get a little bit more fun here as well. Uh, let's see. Some of them I start repeating, so well, of course, my flamingos and my little trailers, my little uh, camping trailers. Not that I have camping, I'm a tent kind of person, but you know, and this is a repeat type of design. And that was it. So um, things like making sure I'm drinking enough water. I'll keep track of that. If I drink enough water for the day, then I get to fill it in. Um, one of these, I'm writing down one positive thought every single day. And with today's climate, that's not a bad thing either. Um, did I get some exercise? Did I go outside just to get some fresh air, you know, for the day? Um, I know you're going to think this is kind of weird but did I play with the cats or brush them because the one has long hair and she really needs to be brushed all the time um, because it's really easy as you know you get busy in your day and you just all of a sudden the day's gone and you didn't say boo to your cat and so that's not why we have them so I did that um, things like making sure the cats have water because that's another thing we have an automatic feeder so sometimes it's real easy to forget to check that and then their water is getting low um so it's it's i mean there's more than that but um i really like the idea of being able to check off or color in or whatever something to keep me on track and doing these things yes drawing all these pictures is a little bit more work than just a box but you don't have to draw all these pictures. You can have a box and just check off, or you can have a list. The reason I switched, I for about two weeks, I did keep a list that I would check off every single day. And I suppose I could have made it into a box with each thing so I didn't have to rewrite every single thing every single day. I learned that. I figured that out pretty fast. That's why I went to something like this. Um, but it kind of helped me refine anything I'm wanted to change. Do I not really want to keep track of that that habit? Um, do I want to put something else in its place um, or add it to the list? So that was, it was nice to keep 
track of it in some other fashion for a couple of weeks and then move to this system in June. All righty. So I kind of added that. I know it's not stitching related, but I kind of added that because I talked about the other planner. So the stitching things that I have done for the last couple of weeks, it's actually been a little bit longer than two weeks since I've come to you with this video because there is, the weather has been great. You know, I'm outside, obviously, and it has been fantastic, and I just can't not get out and get work done. <laughs> so I've kind of been doing that instead. Um, it does take a little bit to do these videos, so you've got to get all your stuff together, do the video, upload it, all that kind of stuff. So it's not just making this video, and then all of a sudden I'm done. It takes a little bit more effort than that. So I wanted to get out and get that yard work done, which I paid for it because my back's been screaming at me. Yesterday, I kind of had to just not do stuff, take it very easy, not do stuff. And today I actually went and had um, a massage because that I don't like chiropractors. Um, and so that's gonna be the best thing to work out those knots that have developed um, and usually I wait to the point where I'm just like, oh my gosh, I can barely walk. And it's been several days and it's still hurting. So that's when I finally get in and get the massage done. So, the ever-ending saga of the T-Balls. When, if you watched last video, I had mentioned that um, I think I have like four, four or five T-Balls done, big and small. And I was going to switch up the colors. And I did. So here is what I did. It is a blue, white, silverish look. You can kind of see on the side there. I am very, very happy with this. Very happy. Um, the side, you can see the silver but it's not super noticeable just from looking at it like here. I mean, you can see it, it's a little accent piece and you can see it, but what I didn't think about is the fact that, and it's a sparkly silver. Um, I did not bring the thread out with me, so I can't tell you what it is. It's DMC, I believe, but it's, um, it's almost like a Krynik kind of thing. So, what I didn't realize when I <laughs> decided to do this, because I had regular DMC that was kind of a silver color that I was potentially going to use instead of this sparkly one, but it blends into the color of the T-ball. <laughs> That's a bit of a problem. <clears throat> so, I, um, like I said, I'm glad I have it on here because you can see it as the accent, but I'm glad it's not the main focus on this. In one of the other T-balls that I did, um, I did um, one of the small ones, used just the tree. And I thought of possibly doing, before I had finished this, of doing the tree again in silver, you know, a sparkly silver tree, wouldn't that be pretty? And then after I did this, I realized I don't want the main thing to be this silver because the T-ball is silver. So I switched it to a white, a white tree. Um, so I'm still refining a little bit on how I'm going to use these colors and how they're going to replace the ones, uh, the other colors that are there. Um, I still like the, the red and the gold and the green color that she has charted for it. It's just something different. Um, so yeah, there we go. Very pretty. The next thing that I did was my Hade. And as I had mentioned a few videos ago, that this was going to be what I worked in on for the whole month of May. I wasn't going to work on, I mean, I worked on the T-balls, but those were just like if I was away from the house. The Hade was just my focus for Stitch Mania. I wasn't going to work on anything else. I ended up doing like 7,000 plus stitches in it for the whole month. I think I averaged, and I just averaged the days I stitched because there was like three or four days I didn't stitch in the whole month of May um, on the Hade. I think it averaged about 260 stitches per, per day that I did. 
um, it's a lot of stitches. 7,000 is a lot of stitches. <laughs> and I'm glad I did it. It's just really frustrating, as all of you who know that work on Hades, <clears throat> that it doesn't look like a lot of stitches. <laughs> it does and it doesn't. I mean, you see the progress, but then you look back, I mean, if you ask somebody how many stitches do you think is in that, they're not going to say over 7,000 stitches. And that's what you got. So I will show you a clip of where I started from the last video and where I'm at now. I kind of explain what I've got there. So, in this instance, for this stretch of stuff that I'm doing, and it's going to be like this almost all the way across, I didn't have a lot of things that were popping up and showing up that were of great interest. You see a little bit more of the castle. You see a little bit, you see the knight. He shows up. But the rest of it is a much more of a background look. So it might be leaves. It might be the books. Um, there wasn't a whole lot that was like, oh, there's a dragon. That was in the last row that I did. So not a lot interesting. But as you can tell, it's so pixelated when you look up close that you can't always tell what you're going to end up with until you step back from it. The other thing I did with... <laughs> and you, you probably saw this, is because there wasn't a whole lot going on, and I knew I was, I was down to that last day, and I knew I wasn't going to make it all the way to where I wanted to, I jumped a little bit, like about 20, 20 squares over, and finished the horse's head. <laughs> I couldn't let him go headless anymore. It was, it was too sad and too depressing to sit and see that poor headless horse um so yeah I filled in the horse's head so I had something to look at there I just not sure how often I'm going to get back to the hate because um I want to get back to those 31 new starts for this year that I did in January so I'm not sure when that's going to happen hopefully I will lay my hands on it here and there but I just don't know exactly right now so the thing that I started on in June, since Chimini ended and I stopped working on the Hade, obviously it's been a few days, so I have worked on some things, or one thing, because um, going back to what, if you haven't heard that before, um, I work on a project that I started in January. I had one project for every single day, so I had 31 new starts, and now once January is over, I work on, I go back and work on those projects for 10 days at a time. So I'm working on a project, I'm about halfway through before I will switch and go to a, one of those other 31 starts. So the one that I am doing now is my flamingo bag. Now, the flamingo is there, they stitched it on a green bag, I had a yellow bag. So I've got this yellow bag here, but I didn't want, and this when you get this bag, it came with all three of those patterns. So I could pick any one that I wanted. I wanted the flamingo. So I'm stitching the flamingo on the yellow bag. So I'll show you what I've done. Here we are. It's looking very cute. Some of these colors, so this orange here, there's some purple and some green, a little bit of green. Um, I think, and there'll be more as well. And I've started, there's going to be a bag hanging here, like she's hanging onto a bag with one of her wings. Those are the light effects from DMC. A little bit different. It's, um, it's a little hard to work with because, especially anchoring it, it wants to slip out a little better. So be careful when you use that stuff. When I worked on this in January, I pretty much had this done right here. This filled in area. So since... I've picked it up in those five days, or four days, I'm getting to the fifth. Um, I finished some, a little bit more of the squirrely part of the um, 
wings. I did his, the legs with the shoes, some of those swirly accents down there. So it's getting there. I've got, I had started, there's like I mentioned, there's a bag down here. She's holding like a shopping bag. There is in her other wing over here, she'll be holding a cup, like a fun cup. So yeah, very fun, very fun. Can't wait to get this done because I am going to use this bag. I will probably um, use some interfacing, some iron-on interfacing for the inside of it. And then I will, because it doesn't have one, I will put a liner inside here so that it will um, protect that interfacing and the stitching even better. Plus, it just looks nicer. Alrighty, so with that, I think we have covered everything. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. This won't be a terribly, terribly long video, about a half hour. So anyway, with that, I hope you enjoyed getting to see our lovelies out here. And uh, as I mentioned, I am still continuing to work on this yard and other things, I've been shoveling a lot of gravel because I've been working on the driveway. Um, and the side, um, it goes down that direction. The side path against the house, I have started doing the stepping stones and putting the pea gravel around it. Um, considering what kind of plants, because I do want to put a few plants down there. And so I'm considering which ones I'm going to use with that. I think that's the main things I've been working on out here. Besides just normal maintenance, mowing the yard, weed and feed, whatever. But it's all going to get done, and it will. So with that, I'm going to say adios, and I hope you all have a wonderful day. If it's not sunny like this, I hope you've enjoyed the sun uh, through this video. And uh, we'll be sending you good vibes, good sunshiny vibes. So anyway, uh, we'll see you next time. Bye. I had forgotten that I wanted to show you what I had done so far from bottom up to my, the point I had stopped. So I have unscrolled it so you can see all the work. Kind of go down, let you see a little bit closer. A lot of work, as you all know.